What's up, everybody? What's the dollars? Welcome to another episode of Long Days. Your nights just got shorter. It's Yanni P, Yanni Long Days, hashtag Yanni Long Days. The first episode that went up, a very well received. Appreciate you. We should start bowing. Do you think the Asians started bowing because they've had unhealthy, dangerous panthogens that have been crawling around the East for a long time, infecting people, and they just figured out that shaking hands was disgusting? Please, let's not lose shaking hands. And when I, when I say that, I'm talking to the black community. White people can lose shaking hands. It just looks like you're jerking off an elephant. That's what we do. We just go like this, and it looks like we're just jerking off an elephant to help it reproduce because it's an orphan or whatever. I don't know what makes you, you want to inseminate an elephant, but humans do it. They stick in. They jerk it off. That's what we do with horses, and then we stick it in. But uh, black people, if we lose black handshakes, I mean, it'll be a lost art form that is talked about like jazz. I mean, you ever see LeBron and any one of his teammates and any other teams he goes to to ring chase where there's a superstar? Um, yeah. He figured, he even got Kevin Love, who's a white guy, to do fucking all that shit. You know, they do, and then they dance, and then it's like a thing, and he's got a different handshake with different people. That is intriguing. They take it to the next level because they live on a rhythm, okay? They live on a rhythm. Whereas white people, we live on worry. We live on worry, and we're very cognitive. We're going, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Where black people is just kind of, they're living on a rhythm. You know what I mean? They're going with the flow of nature. So please don't lose handshakes. I mean, it's really hard to think of anything else that's happening right now except for the fact that someone has come up with a theory who's been talking about it for a long time and wrote an op-ed in New York Magazine about, wow, it's not a conspiracy theory to think that COVID-19, and I say COVID, I don't want to sound like a New Yorker, okay? I want a cup of coffee. Can I have a cup of coffee? My dad was from Brooklyn. He used to get paranoid about his, his accent. So he would, the word coffee, he just trained himself to say coffee, and then otherwise he would talk like he was from Brooklyn and he grew up and went to, you know, James Madison High School, played football there. But then he would go, yeah, yeah, how you doing? Uh, hun, hun, come here. Yeah, can I get two eggs over easy? And then can I have a cup of coffee? As if, the, and then he would sit me down and make me go this, that, these, and those. And not that, this, these, and those. Which if you're from New York, you just kind of, at some point you say, let me get that, uh, let, let me see that. And instead of that, pronounce the H like a good English person. My dad was everyone's friend. He would have been a Benedict Arnold during the Revolutionary War. You can't trust people who got too many friends. It means they're too nice and they care about people think and they're easily corruptible. Can't trust them. I don't trust my dad, even though he's gone. I still don't trust him. He's probably out there being promiscuous, being other people's guardians, angels, when he shouldn't be watching his son. But he's out there fucking protecting strangers because my dad loved people too much. Don't trust anyone who likes people. They're giving away too many secrets. So, I don't know if you guys read New York Magazine. I don't know if anyone even knows what a different article uh, origin is. Nobody even knows any, nobody even checks anymore. The majority of the population just see an article and read it. They don't check. All you gotta do is write the word Herald, Sun, or Times in whatever your website is, and you could get at least five million people to share it, at least. If it's a headline about something they wanna believe to feed their narcissistic paranoia. That's all you need is any of those words. Herald? Sun or Times, and it sounds legit. You can even be the asshole Times. The word asshole could be in front of Times. People just see Times, and they're going, I'm checking it out. Wow, we got uh, fans writing in, and I just looked it up. It's real. Trump supporters have stormed and breached the U.S. Capitol. As we talk. So here we are. We are uh, Slovenia now. And I predicted this. This is wild. Because if you go to, I did a little... Uh, Paul Verzi had like a little Patreon show or something that he put up on YouTube. It was a little show called Dude, I Called It. And uh, I call, that is something I said was going to happen. We were going to look like Slovenia. The election was going to be contested. The House and there was, floor was evacuated by police. Wow. So we are now a third world country as we're doing this. Look, let's just all do podcasts until it all goes up. 
You know, <laughs> nobody should go outside. I can't wait for it's not safe for anyone to leave their own home, which we're getting very close to. Right now, they've evacuated the house floor. Everyone who lives in D.C. is not going outside. It's going to become, there's going to become two ways to live. Outside, protesting, giving each other coronavirus, and inside with a very big gun and artillery. Having things delivered to you by people who are pre-checked and, uh, you know, you escorted by police. Oh That's where we're headed to. I mean, apparently the cops ran in and told lawmakers to get under their desks and hide because they- Nice. Didn't. Nice, because they're scared of their own citizens. Nice. Well, you know, a little bit of that isn't bad. Maybe next time they do a, uh, a stimulus bill and simultaneously another defense bill, they will know that people need a little bit more than $600 to survive through a pandemic. There's only been like, there was only unemployment that went for a couple of months, however unemployment lasts. And then, I mean, there's industry shut down. And look, like I said, and I always say, I don't want to repeat myself, but shit rolls downhill is something you should always keep in your mind. And it's the, you, the top, if it's shit at the top, everything below is going to be shit. Our president, in my opinion, is shit. He cares about himself and that's all he cares about. And he was rolling on a good economy. And of course, Republicans, their mantra and what they live by is just deregulate. So it's always an orgy and the economy always gets stimulated, but it's usually a bubble because it's all fake businesses and fucking, you know, people just selling up, buying houses, selling houses, buying stocks, selling stock. It's all imaginary. The stock market is imaginary. It's just gambling on how much something's worth by how much people want to buy it based on good news from the company. It's all bullshit. So, of course, that stimulates the economy, but then you ignore the waitress in Ohio who has to work six jobs or seven jobs just to be able to feed one of her kids and the other one she has to sell to slavery in Mexico or wherever they go. <laughs> you don't hear that story in the press because, you know, that's, that's the majority of the people. You just hear how the stock market's, you know, crushing, and that's what Donald Trump would talk because he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and his dad fucking took care of him. But um, that's what you don't hear. So... He came in and that's what he had going for himself. He's right on a lot of things, you know, border, uh, you know, um, obviously China, but, you know, he might have poked China too much and not understood that we're their bitch. You got to understand when you're someone's bitch and you're in a prison. We're all fucking glued to this ball that's floating in nothing. We're all kind of in a prison. In fact, if there was a God and he was good, hell would look a little like this, where you got to kind of make your own choices. You get cancer, corona, your girlfriend dumps you, you know what I mean? You got to eat other animals to survive, you know, and you got to prove to God that you're a good person. Like, because if he's a good God, like we claim God is, this would be hell. Not so bad, but kind of horrible, but kind of a horror show. Yeah, mental illness, you kind of lose your mind, depression, basketball injuries, you fall on your ankle the wrong way, you have a chest pain and you wonder if that's anxiety or if you're presently having a heart attack while you're doing a... How funny would it be if I had a full-on heart attack... <laughs> A while I was doing a podcast that I told people, oh, that's just anxiety. But for that one time, it was actually a heart attack. Then everyone out there who had anxiety and got a little tightness would think that they were having a heart attack. And that would fill the hospitals even worse. Because I mean, this would get at least a few thousand people watching it in a certain area. And those thousand people, everyone's got anxiety right now. Everyone has anxiety. I'm going to double check if this is true. But somebody said a person just got shot outside the Capitol building. Like, oh. Good. I mean, you know. Person probably had corona, so there's one less person to spread corona. <laughs> no, it's horrible, horrible. And we're all worried about Dr. Dre right now. Um, there's only one person who's not worried about Dr. Dre. It's his ex-wife. She got the news, and she there was a little pep in her step when she went to the refrigerator to get a yogurt. It's horrible. Please, 2020, stay in 2020, and don't take one of the best rap producers of all time, billionaire Dr. Dre. There's gotta be a downside to being a billionaire and i'll tell you what that downside is if you're married imagine you become a billionaire and you you're married dinners start to get a little different while you're looking across the table every argument becomes a reason to kill your wife right it used to be because look you get into an argument with your wife when you're not a billionaire right you're like bitch leave i don't give a shit right I'll give you half of my $30,000, right? <laughs> we can go to court and yeah, fucking sue me for what? But every argument, when you're a billionaire, 
becomes a reason to maybe kill your wife because that argument could cost you in Dr. Dre's case or Jeff Bezos' case or or Tiger Woods' case, and the list goes on, hundreds of millions of dollars in argument. So you gotta understand human nature. First of all, if you're someone who marries Dr. Dre, who has hit a few girls in the past, you're someone who's not, let's say, good at stuff. <laughs> you're good at one thing, and that is um, using your sex appeal to get powerful and rich men. Because if you'll notice, all these powerful and rich men have dope-looking wives, especially rappers and fucking athletes. So imagine the when that reality hits you, when your wife just starts more arguments and more arguments with you. And then you have that moment of clarity where you're taking a shit and you're, you know, I imagine just marbled out, fucking balled out bathroom and you realize, oh shit, this bitch is trying to divorce me because she wants a couple hundred million dollars. Yeah, I would do the same thing. I would do the same fucking thing. If you don't get a prenup, that must be the worst thing to marry your chick before you make your money. Ah, yeah, that's got to be the worst thing. But also on the flip side, shout out to the a little bit to that. Hold on. Shout out to those women. Shout out to these women who who marry rich guys and fuck them even though they don't want to but do it for the money. Shot that's a job. That is a fucking job. And that should be taxed. You should have to pay taxes on what you get. Like when you go to the hair salon or you go to Bergdorf Goodman's to shop with his money, there should be a gold digger tax on that because it's a job. You're making a salary and it's not easy. And that's shout out to you because that's not easy to fucking go to the gym, you know, get the fake tits, be, be uh, sexually appealing to him forever, to, to sleep with someone who absolutely makes you nauseous. That shit is a job. That's in a lot of ways a harder job than a lot of these people working other jobs that are considered jobs. Imagine having to fuck someone who you absolutely are disgusted by and are doing it so you can go to Bergdorf Goodman's. That's a hell of a job. You keep that person happy. He's not going to donate his money to whatever party is going to blow up kids in whatever third world country. So you're doing your job. You're doing a very important job by taking that semen out of his balls <laughs> in order to relax that disgusting fucking ugly guy or short guy. Because let's be honest, nobody who's really good looking becomes a billionaire. You got to have a weird eye or lose your hair. I mean, if you see early pictures of Elon Musk, the kid was bald. Now he's got a full head of hair. Him and LeBron go to the same guy who makes miracles happen for 100 millionaires. Have you ever seen younger pictures of him? He's completely bald. I mean, and Jeff Bezos. Yeah. It's disturbing. And Jeff Bezos has one eye. I mean, the other eye is fucking... Go, you know, the other eye is like thinking of ways to fucking not pay workers more than minimum <laughs> wage. This eye is always thinking about that while this eye is fucking thinking about how he can take over the world. And there's, they're just all squeaks. They're all either, you got, like I told you, you got to watch those squeaks and ugly people because ugly people get motivated and uh, good looking people, it's too easy. They take it for granted. They're not motivated because things just come too easy. So it's like they're always good, good looking people just take things for granted. They don't have to learn how to fucking take you out with power because they're just given power by people wanting to bang them out. And I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why evolution favors beautiful women over ugly women. You, I mean, over smart women. You would think, you would think, hey, why does evolution not favor moral and smart people if that is what keeps civilization going, keeps society in check, and also helps us survive? I'll tell you why. It may in the future, but up until this point, Evolution has favored beautiful women over smart women. That's why powerful rich guys go after the beautiful women over smart women because there's something in our brains and in, our, and in, in women's brains and in reality that knows that if there's a war or a famine, which there used to be like every year and millions of people died, you can always sell pussy. You can always sell pussy. You can always offer your pussy to the top chieftain, the top warlord and survive and make kids and probably more kids. Genghis Khan had like 10 kids per chick. So that's always in the back of our mind. That's left over from evolution. You can't sell a thesis in Belarusian literature during a fucking famine or a war. So that's why pretty chicks with fat asses and big tits are fucking favored over the, you know, the, I mean, pussy's more powerful than drugs. Pussy's more powerful than brains. Pussy's the most powerful thing in the world. It I mean, just truly is. The chat is blowing up. People really think shit's hitting the fan. And I'm reading Trump's tweets 
What's he saying? He's now turned on Mike Pence. I mean, yeah. Pence didn't have the courage to do. Yeah, yeah, and you, and yeah, yeah, guys, and Obama. So, so the so you so you zealots. I'm going to call you fanatics. You're Trump fanatics. You treat him like fucking Jesus. You're so stupid and manipulated. All this fucking. He's a child. He's a petulant child who couldn't lose and doesn't mind lying and doing whatever to get what he wants because he's an absolute narcissist. So yeah, Obama wasn't born in this country either. Do you remember that one? That put it, basically put him on the political scene? It's just like he just kept going with that obvious lie. And then when he was asked about it, he just shrugs his shoulders and go, whatever. It put him on the scene. Now, like if you watch a video from 2016, there was this guy that predicted that he was going to do this. They basically have to drag him out of the White House. And if he lost, he was going to claim election fraud. There is zero evidence. This has gone to courts. There's zero evidence of elector fraud. He didn't, it, the election wasn't stolen. He is fucking whining and bitching. And that's because he's Donald Trump and he doesn't like to lose. Even though he does a lot of losing, most of the stuff he does is losing. He never admits it. You never know about it because he's a celebrity and he was made by The Apprentice. That's, how, that's what put him on the national scene. Before that, people didn't know who Donald Trump was really, except New Yorkers, you know? So, I mean, the shit's hitting the fan. So, uh... Well, yeah, I mean, it's a civil war. We're here. I mean, it's really happening. Right? My mom even just texted me, Trump supporters took over the government. They Now there's a total lockdown in D.C. apparently. Wow. So this is going to be like Trump supporters are, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is all you guys, all you Republicans, you moderate Republicans, you beautiful people who were talking about how violent the left is and, and uh, how violent Antifa is and it's only the left you got to worry about. Nah, man, the internet doesn't... Uh, just create paranoia one way. There's extremists on both sides. Everything's become extreme. And um, this is the media's fault, man. This is the media's fault online that's created people into paranoid extremists. You know, it's like the joke I have on my hour that, you know, it used to be you could have a Democrat and Republican, you have them in your same family. I mean, it's the truth. My dad was a Republican. He did it mostly for business. And my mom was a d Democrat. And it was like, they, nobody, it wasn't that big of a divide. Politicians spoke with respect to one another. When they lost, they graciously conceded. Um, and then Trump came with his pugnacious kind of name calling and ad hominems. And everyone loved it because we've been inculcated with reality shows and just the basis level of entertainment uh, where now our celebrities are doing like 13 second dance videos you know, and that's just where we are. I mean, we're completely appealing to only our reptilian lowest common denominator brain, where we're just looking at 14 year old, 15 year old girls going like, -ha 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 -ha. that's where we've gotten, you know? But I tell you who's fucking out there. I tell you who's in fucking DC right now is fucking Sean Terry. Let me tell you something. There's fucking 14,000 votes missing in fucking Atlanta, Georgia. And I fucking took time off from the firehouse, went down there, and I'll tell you where those fucking votes are. They're fucking in Kamala Harris's fucking pocket in a dyke suit. Go fucking check those pockets in a Hillary Clinton fucking dyke suit. She got those fucking votes right there. It's not fucking fair. Trump won this fucking election. How do I know? Because fucking Trump told me. It's crazy. Trump's now tweeting like kind of pro he's encouraging the Capitol, them. but also saying don't hurt the cops because we're with the cops. Right. So he's telling the storm the Capitol. I can't believe this is happening in our own country. My cell phone's got to be blowing up with my brother living out there. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is a real problem, dude. This is a real problem. And this is, uh, this is why the Republicans lost the election in Georgia. Because, you know, I, the, uh, Trump was obsessed with votes in Georgia. Even if he won Georgia, he's not going to win the election. I mean, he'd have to overturn turn a bunch of states. And there's just, zero, there's just zero evidence in reality of it. I can't believe this is happening during a pandemic. Although, I, you kind of can. People are losing their mind. There was a guy walking around fucking Queens with a machete chopping people up. And uh, some staffer got hit with a brick. And it wasn't because she was a staffer of Cuomo or de Blasio. I can't remember which one. That just, it just happened to be a random attack on someone who happened to have that job. But that's the type of crimes that you used to see in the 80s in New York. In the 80s. During uh, the Reagan-Bush era, where trickle-down economics was really at its height. Milton Friedman. There's a lot, of, lot to be said about the free market. 
But there's also a lot to be said about socialism that tempers the free market. Socialism on its own, obviously an evil. Capitalism on its own, also you have to admit, is evil. It ends up being, I mean, when you could just put your money in the bank and your money makes more money than people make just off the interest because they're loaning money out, it just becomes unbalanced. Have you ever played the game Monopoly? There comes a point where one person has all the money and the other person has none. That is what you call laissez-faire capitalism. It's a French word that means unfettered capitalism. If you're a fucking idiot like me, unfettered capitalism means no intervention, completely free market. Um, the fans want You gotta know. have rules. You can't play basketball with jail rules. <laughs> Okay, you can't have capitalism without rules. You can't have socialism without rules. You have to use them to temper each other. And people say, I don't want to become a socialist nation. We already are. I hate to break it to you, you fucking morons out there. We live in a mixed economy. We have socialism. We do. That's what social security is, Medicare, cops, firefighters, roads. Every country in the first world is a mixed economy. And that's what works best. But don't be an idiot. Don't be an extremist. Okay, don't be an extremist on the left or the right. Let's get back to being leaning left and leaning right and arguing about that. That's fine. So we can look at each other like human beings. Stop thinking everyone on the right is an animal. And stop thinking everyone on the left is like a trans, bi, family-hating, immoral demon. It's not true. Okay, that's just what the media throws out there so you'll fucking... Stop and watch the car crash. And that's what happens now. These fucking extremists that are storming buildings and burning down things in Portland, they believe Twitter is reality when it's not. Okay, because it's the biggest losers who are on Twitter for the longest amount of time. And they're the ones that start to believe that that is real when really they're just talking to people who are crazy like them on the other side or absolute 100% Russian bots or Chinese bots that are put there or fake accounts that are put there to sow discord in our country because they know our weakness is our democracy and our freedom. They know that. And that's how you fight wars now with subterfuge. You can't storm a border anymore. We'll nuke the shit out of you. But you can fuck a country up from the inside. They're basically matrixing, matrixing us right now. We are Agent Smith, and they are Neo, and they have jumped inside our body, and they fucking put corona in there and, and, and fake news. So this is really wild that they're storming the Capitol while I'm doing a podcast. This just feels so much more important than that. So I'm glad you're sticking around and not watching the news. <laughs> Why not? Watch this. It's just as important. It's a matter of opinion. I can claim it's important. I told you, I'm a scientist. I'm a journalist. You got to be here to get the truth. Some fans want to know what Derek's going to do in the Civil War. Let me tell you something right now, brother. First of all, I got a message out there to any ladies who I might have married during the blockout, brother. If, uh, listen, lady, I don't know you. If I can't remember you, I don't know you. I think I might have even married one of these Democrats out there in Miami. And I, one time I married an old Jewish woman in Fort Lauderdale. I mean, I've been all over the place, brother. But the thing is, if I can't remember it, the marriage is annulled. I'll tell you right now, I'm Trump 2020 all the way, brother. I live in Florida, so I am pro-business, my establishment, and I want the government out of my pocket. And if you pay with cash at the bar, you get an extra free shot from our guest bartender next weekend. We got the one and only Maria Menounos. She had a brain tumor last year, so the gig's kind of drawn up. Now she's got her own internet show. I was able to book her for a couple of grand brothers. She's coming down with her fake husband. She's pretending to marry because I don't know if that guy's a straight man at all. I'm just making things up. I don't know anything about Maria Menounos. She was the first person that came to mind because I couldn't think of any C or D list celebrities who would be available to bartend. Maybe I got to look through whoever was on 90210 in the 90s. Jason Priestley will be behind the wood wall. Believe it or not, he's a hardcore Republican and will be talking on Fox News like a lot of former A-list TV celebrities. That's what I love about Fox, brother. When you go on Fox and they go Hollywood to show you a Hollywood celebrity who goes right, it's either Chachi from Who's in Charge 
or John Voight, and the list is very short, or James Woods, brother. And I think James Woods has completely lost his mind because he had corona of the face, brother. The guy's got bad acne. I don't know how he was able to ever get an acting role with a face that looks like the moon's surface, brother. Have you ever looked at James Woods' face in a high-definition camera, brother? You might sprain your ankle if you tried to look, walk on it. It looks like a road that should have been filled up from snow damage a long time ago. There's fucking crater holes in his face, brother. But I love his politics. He's James Woods. He's the smartest actor to ever come out of Hollywood, brother. Uh, somebody wanted to I know. don't know if I answered your question, but I definitely did the Derek character. <laughs> somebody wanted to know if Sergeant Starburst is uh, now at DC helping them out. Sergeant Starburst. Are you talking about Luke St. Simon? Um, yeah, we were there doing an uh, hi, this is Luke St. Simon, and I'm here to put you on notice. You're on notice. And, yeah, we were there with a couple of my comrades, and we did an anti-protest. The thing was, we got overwhelmed with Proud Boys. Proud Boys, these are a bunch of males who live in their basement, usually unemployed, or usually work at the mall, or at a Buffalo Wild Wings, as a waiter, or a bartender, or bar staff, in some of the areas of America, suburbs, and otherwise, that you would never go to unless you are from there. It's those kind of places where you marry your high school sweetheart, and your high school sweetheart has a job holding a buzzer at Panera Bread. And you guys meet at the mall and just walk around in circles to the same mall you've been walking around for a long time. So the Proud Boys, who are those boys, have been quarantined as malls have been thinned out, and they've just been taking steroids and watching a lot of Joe Rogan and Alex Jones, and these boys are really hyped up. So um, they're all on Ponzer Chocolat right now, and amphetamines, and so they just kind of pushed us over, and they've stormed the Capitol. Um, but we're gonna we're going to follow them and put them on notice. So I'm just regrouping in here, and I'm gonna go back there and put them on notice. I'm gonna say, hey, you guys are on notice, okay? You're on notice, and I am armed. I am armed with wokeness. I'm gonna say, let's talk for a second. Let's talk, okay? Let me hear your views, you know? But yeah, it was just the sea of blue and yellow. And by the way, is anyone angrier about the Proud Boys than Fred Perry? I mean, Fred Perry. I mean, Fred Perry. Now, here's the thing about Polo you guys don't know. Polo obviously used to be a brand you couldn't just pick up in Marshalls for $14.99. Hilfiger at one point was a brand you couldn't just pick up for $14.99 in Macy's. But what happened was gangs started wearing those clothes. When I grew up, there was a gang called the Low Lives, and they would wear all, all polo, and they would flood stores like 40 of them would just smash and grab. They'd all run into a store and just grab polo, and they were called the Low Lives. And they'd also you sell drugs and beat you the fuck up in Brooklyn and shit like that. So it kind of ruined polo. He'll figure same thing, like fucking gangsters started wearing it and shit, went out of style. Fred Perry, now you got these fucking political extremist kids. They're a gang, pretty much the Proud Boys. They gather and they fucking, you know, they, they, they're, they, they say they're there to beat up Antifa, which is also a gang. I mean, what are we doing? How has America turned into fucking West Side Story without the dancing? What is going on right now? I feel like I'm watching the Warriors in the 70s. There's just gangs of people. I mean, this is a, what you call a period of turmoil. Wow. And so now Fred Perry, which was a high-end brand, I used to love wearing Fred Perry um, shirts, has been ruined because it somehow became the Proud Boys uniform. Couldn't you guys have picked fucking Old Navy? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know it's not a real tough gang if... To get into the gang, you're required to buy a polo shirt that costs $140 per shirt. I mean, so this is some of the footage from the Capitol here. Holy shit. They're really there. It's really going Holy down. shit. I mean, I guess after reading that bioweapon article, this is kind of like a full circle. I, I'm sure Putin's watching this. I mean, they're loving it, dude. They are, they're absolutely loving it. Um, they're loving it. I mean, we're, we're in America, so we don't understand that um, our president who he really is, man. He's a star from reality TV. Um, he's a celebrity. He's always wanted to be famous. Um, and so these people follow him 
And they really believe that the election was stolen even though there's no evidence because they watch one video that's misconstrued or maybe a few votes were thrown out here and there. But, you know, overall, he lost by uh, such a substantial amount that, you know, it's just there's no voter fraud to that level where it would affect, affect the election. But these people hold on to the rhetoric. They hold on to one fucking video they watched or, you know, whatever pundit they're listening to, whatever pro-Trump Twitter personality. And this is the result of it, man. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people dead from coronavirus because they're listening to Dr. Drew, who ended up getting coronavirus and apologizing for his stance. But, you know, there's a lot of people dead because they were listening to you act like you were a fucking virologist. You know, it, it, it's really, um, people have really, it's criminal. We've gotten to the point where free speech is too free. There's consequences. Everyone's yelling fire in a crowded movie theater. Uh, you know, and what that means is Oliver Wendell Holmes, uh, in his famous quote from a decision, a Supreme Court decision, Oliver Wendell Holmes, who was a uh, chief justice, his famous quote is, you can't, you know, free speech, there's a limit to free speech. You can't yell fire in a crowded movie theater, which means you can't say things that will endanger the lives of others when you know it's not true. Our president does that now without remorse, without conscience. He just lies, knowing that this is going to be the result of it. And um, just as bad, so do Twitter personalities. Who's that? Yeah, it's just, the, it, it's actually the Chinese, it's a Chinese <laughs> answering machine that I constantly get that's just spam call, and it's in Chinese. So yeah, no, they're watching this now, laughing their heads off, man, because this is how we get taken down. And you, people aren't aware of it. They're just watching me going, he said something bad about Trump. He said, I don't fuck, I can't watch Yachty anymore. He's fucking a liberal cock. You've, your brain has been completely fucking manipulated. And on the other side, they're going, Yanni's a Nazi. Yanni's a Nazi. Venetia's friends are watching going, um, are those guys Trump supporters? I'm, gonna put, I'm a comedian. I have no power. If I say something that gets you upset, maybe you're a fragile little cuck. Whether you're on the right or the left, maybe you're a bitch. Maybe you haven't been anything through your life, so you get upset about stupid shit. Maybe you've never really licked the soil of hell the way that I have. Have you licked the soil of hell and been through anything difficult in your fucking entire life? Because if you have, you wouldn't look at the world that way. You would understand what bullshit is. You would know what's important. It ain't this shit. You wouldn't be marching down the fucking street talking about the election was stolen when it wasn't. It clearly wasn't. It's paranoia to think that the, the Democrats have a stronghold on the legal... Trump has installed more fucking... He's installed more justices than like any president in the fucking whole century. Two centuries. How many, can you look that up? How many, how many judges have been installed by the Trump administration? There has been an absolute run on the courts. And, and then tell me how many he's installed to give the Supreme Court a conservative majority. You guys are fucking insane. And that's why you're turning on other Republicans because that's how much you want your delusion to be true. The, the Supreme Court is now a conservative majority, which hold that. By the way, all you dumb lefties who celebrate uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, RBG, it's her fault that the Supreme Court has now become a Republican and leans right and has Catholics on it who don't believe in abortion, et cetera. It's her fault. Obama took her to lunch and said, hey, you know what? You're 80 something. Your health's not the greatest. Why don't you retire now so I can install someone? No. Also, go look at her stance originally on gay marriage and a few other things. She wasn't the fucking champion of the left that they made. Yes, she was a woman. She made history, etc. She's the same age as my mother of that generation. There wasn't many women in the law school. But because of her refusal, to quite reasonably retire at like 86 or fucking 83 or whatever it is. She died during Trump's presidency and Trump was able to push through his second Supreme Court nominee. One of which assaulted somebody in high school. Somebody in the he didn't assault her. He, he jumped on her with another boy laughed and was rough with her and she had to get up and run away. Somebody in the chat said, get to the more important news. 
Kim and Kanye are getting divorced. I mean, what are we talking about here? Thank you to the person watching this. Who cares about that the capital of the United States has been stormed by fucking troops like we're living in the 1700s with Trump flags? Who cares about the fact that we're on the verge of a civil war with fringe Republicans who can't accept the election results and Antifa's on the way? The thing is, the Trump supporters are now going to win this fight. Because they are all strapped with big guns. And Antifa comes with their little Molotov cocktails and their Portland, uh, their Portland little slingshots. It's not going to happen. And your little shields and your umbrellas. Unfortunately, wearing black clothes is not going to make you invisible to fucking infrared semi-automatic weapon fire. Even though you're dressed in all black. Because these people are fucking strapped. So you come from a state that's very liberal that has a lot of gun laws, which in some of them I support. But unfortunately for the Civil War, it doesn't bode well. So now we're in trouble as a country because a lot of these people are as strapped as the military. So this is fucking wild that they've stormed the Capitol. And where the fuck is the military? I guess because the police supports it. The- well, somebody wrote in the chat that they're refusing to send the National Guard in, kind of leaving everyone stranded. Well, send the fucking National Guard in and take these losers off the fucking Capitol and take Antifa off the streets. At this point, you just got to start shooting people. What do you want from me? Go I home. I think they did. <laughs> Rubber bullets. I don't know. Get them inside, okay? This is bad for tourism. Somebody's asking, why is everyone a hypocrite? Everyone's a hypocrite because um, it's human nature to put... It's human nature to look after yourself and your family first. It's very hard to be an evolved human being and put principle over interest. At the end of the day... If you're scared for your life or you perceive that your life or livelihood is being threatened, you can get anyone to believe anything. It's very few people, and they're always the heroes of history, and they really are the locomotive of history, these brave men and women who put principle above interest. They do things in the interest of principle and not for the principle of interest. Most people you can scare into or manipulate into doing what you want based on threatening their livelihood directly or indirectly. And so that's why it is, is because we're, we're, look, we're evolved monkeys. Believe what you want to believe, but the evidence is unequivocal and it is certain that we evolved uh, from an ancestor that we shared with chimpanzees. Did, did you think, do you think we made it? <laughs> do you think we're closer to chimp or closer to Elon Musk? What do you think? What do you think? I'll tell you who I am closer to. I'm closer to a chimp. I can't sit down and talk with Elon Musk and know what the fuck he's talking about. I can't sit down with Mark Zuckerberg and tell you how to code. I can't sit down with a fucking scientist and tell you who do all these vaccines and virology. I can't sit down with you with an engineer. I can't sit down with these fucking architects. There's like 1% of the people who are closer to human Right? And then there's like half of a percent who are like genius. And then there's another couple of percent that can talk to those geniuses. And then the rest of us are in the middle and we're closer to the 80%. Or I'm not good at math, so I just show you. I'm fucking, I'm making up percents here. We're closer to the 80 percent that are barely sliding into human. I'm talking about replay at the plate. They're getting a finger in. It's got to go to an instant replay. It takes a 10-minute commercial break to decipher whether he got a pinky before the swipe tag by the catcher. That's who we are. Barely slide into human. Most of us are, are, are there, and then there's some of us like me who is more closely related to them than I am to the ones who can understand the 4%. You basically break up humanity into four categories. The fucking stupid, the kind of stupid, the smart, and the genius. I mean, a lot of people writing in, do you think uh, Chris Stefano's on the steps of the Capitol? Right no, now? but his friends are. No. And somebody else wanted to know, how would you think this would go if it was BLM people doing... Oh, if this was BLM people, it would totally be fine. But in their defense, the BLM, the BLM people are... Um, their, their cause, even though Black Lives Matter is just like... They're all over the place and there's stuff like that. Their cause, historically, has some merit. Okay? It's like, if you don't think that police officers... Uh, or have been a little rougher, especially before cameras. It's just like, come on, man. It's like, come on. And what, the thing I think Black Lives Matter makes their mistake 
is uh, the mistake that Martin Luther King did not make. They're going about it too Malcolm x which I understand because they got angry and you get angry, you just fucking, you know, you, and you see the videos and, and of course it's pulled in this certain context. The reason, what I'm saying is like, if you go the Martin Luther King route, you go after the moderates. You don't make it more about race, you make it more about police brutality because police kill more white people than anything. It's just nobody cares about that because it's not as politically charged and it doesn't cause as much division. So the media doesn't report on it the same way they report on the racial stuff because like I said, they're looking for the biggest car crash impact. They want you to rubberneck. So they want it to be horrible. So they emphasize those more than they do, you know, the Tony Temples. The, the white people who are, mur- you know, there's, if you look at the stats and you look, go search for white guys killed by cops, there's horrific ones that are tantamount to the ones that you see in black people. Black people get killed at a higher rate, but unfortunately also black people interact with the police a little bit more per, you know, if you account for population, uh, there's a crime problem there because of poverty, because of the history of this country. In my opinion, I'm not scared to say the truth. It's trauma. It's trauma. You were abused. The black community was abused by America. And if you look at the problems in the black community, and I'm not the first person to bring this up. Maybe I am. I don't know. But I would doubt it because it's obvious. Single parent homes, crime, uh, education are problems in the black community. Why? Well, you look at the history. That wasn't long ago at all. At all. Uh, You know, 150, 160 years. That's nothing, dude. That's two lifetimes. Of, of people living, you know, eight, like Louis C.K. said, two 80-year-olds living back-to-back back or whatever. It's like, if you read, if you were black, a black person and were educated in America, you were killed. So, yeah, that's going to get in your head a little bit, whether you're aware of it or not, you know? You're, you're, if, you, if you're raised in an abusive family, you become abusive to yourself and to all. It's just, that's where you learn. It's what you know. So if you were conditioned to think, hey, if I learned or went to school, it's not cool or bad or something bad's going to happen to me. Okay, you see that problem now. Single parent, you know, single parent homes, blah, blah, blah. What was happened? They ripped families apart to sow discord. So they would, so they would disunify people to sow discord. So they, would, they were always fearful of revolution, of, uh, you know, of revolt. So they would rip families apart. So where does that have its roots? Fucking there. Unfortunately, it's trauma. It's trauma. So it's like... You were abused. The black community was fucking abused. So it's rooted in that. At least this is rooted in delusion. This is being led by an immoral person who only cares about his own ego and his own power. And uh, this is brutal, dude. But this is what happens, man, when someone's charismatic, a charismatic leader gets people to believe things that are complete lies because it doesn't matter. He's so charismatic and funny and shit. And these people uh, believe that he he won the election. That's why they're there. They're there because they believe he won the election, although there's uh, no evidence of uh, widespread voter fraud through the courts. A lot of them Republican, Republican senator, uh, secretary of states who've certified the elections, governors. They're all Republicans. Republican uh, 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 Mike Pence. None of this shit is good for the Republicans, and that's probably why you lost in Georgia. Because that one bitch who was appointed by... Uh, whatever, the lieutenant governor, whatever, and she was appointed senator and she lost. She was, she was the one, she got, I'm going straight to D.C. to fucking, to protest the, uh, st- the stolen election. We're fucked, dude. And then you go to these Twitter personalities and they're just, they're shamelessly self-interested and they're spreading this misinformation and paranoia and they're doing it for their own podcasts. They have no principles, People who want to get famous will do anything for their own interest and make it seem like they're doing it on principle. So to wrap this up, do you think the, the gates of hell have opened? Oh, yeah, I told you that a long time ago. Yeah, me and Timmy were talking about that a long time ago. The gates of hell are wide open. They're wide open, and we need to close these gates with the National Guard. So, yeah, this is a great way to start the year, right? It's a great way to start the year. Um, yeah, if you think that we were going to get a clean break, like when you take a really, really high fiber shit and you don't have to wipe, if you thought that was going to happen in 2021 from 2020, you're not looking at the food we've been eating in 2020. Diarrhea is going to last for a little while. The fumes of 2020 are fucking definitely on 2021. And uh, I don't know how we're going to close these gates of hell, but it's, it's going to probably lead to a dictator. Yeah, to wrap this up, you go read Plato's Republic and you see quite clearly that uh, Plato's, uh, Plato's 
re recording of what Socrates allegedly said in the cycles of government in the, in the Republic is the democracy leads to tyranny. And um, you look at Rome, you can obviously, that, obviously see that the democracy in Greece didn't last long and uh, the democracy in Rome didn't last long because uh, human beings can't handle freedom, man. We can't handle it. Think about it. You ask, oh, well, I don't want things regulated. Sometimes things, I mean, look at fat people. They can't even control fucking the amount of calories they put in their body. We can't even control ourselves with a pie of pizza. We're greedy little pigs. So maybe we deserve, maybe we deserve a dictator. Maybe we deserve to be oppressed. Maybe we deserve to live in a police state. That maybe we deserve a, a CCP type of party that just completely holds control over your freedoms in its own interest to keep itself in power and to, to keep some sort of order. Maybe, we, maybe we, uh, we deserve a dictator like North Korea. Maybe we deserve Putin. Maybe it's what we deserve. Because look, at these, that's what these people want. Yanni, long days. Just your fucking days just got a lot shorter because your night just got longer because the winter's here. Winter isn't coming. It is here. And it is this podcast every Sunday, new episode. Check it out. Go subscribe. Giannis Pappas Comedy on YouTube. It's now available on Spotify. It's probably available at this point on iTunes and everywhere. Tell your friends about it. You know, posting your stories. Make clips, do whatever, promote it if you like it. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you watching this show and being here to help me explore my functioning mental illness. Now I got to go get a clonopin.